Well, in Nigeria and many parts of uh, Africa, persons with disabilities don't enjoy what others do. They struggle to access basic facilities and are not given the same opportunities even when they are mentally capable of delivery. Now, they may be blind, but they have deep insight, may be deaf, but they hear the voice of wisdom, may be lame, but stand up when it matters. They are the abandoned children on the streets, the hidden child in the house, some households, and the men and women subjected to begging for survival. Today on VSA, we focus on the world of persons with disabilities, trying to understand their state of mind and how they can be better cared and catered for. Welcome, I'm Suleiman. Well, the most common types of disabilities are visual impairment, hearing impairment, physical impairment, intellectual impairment, and communication impairment. But you'd be amazed to see that uh, it goes beyond some of these. Well, all of these sum up uh, into a massive population of persons with disabilities. Currently, about 14% of Nigeria's population live with one disability or the other. Despite the National Assembly discrimination against persons, with Disabilities Prohibition Act of 2018, not much has been done in terms of implementation. Now, as a means of support to this group of persons, nine states in Nigeria have enacted laws to protect the rights of persons with disabilities. They face stigmatization, discrimination, access to medical care, and basic facilities are not readily available and lack of access to what can make their lives easier to live. Now, the COVID-19 pandemic has hit the world in a very bad place, but has done worse to persons with disabilities in Nigeria and many parts of Africa. Despite these challenges, some persons with disabilities stand out. They're brilliant, exceptional, and are leading lights in their endeavors. Today, with me in the studio is Trust Sean Inonse, a journalist and a Dari Dairo, who is the general manager at Lagos State Office of Disability Affairs. And of course, uh, also in Abuja, joining me is Chinyere Pel Ezere. I, I mean, uh, Constance Onyemachi, I, I beg your pardon. Constance is in Abuja. Uh, yes, Constance, I can see you. Thanks for joining us. And right here in the studios again is Chinyere Pel Ezere, who is a friend of trust. So today we're having a conversation that bothers on something that will you know, affect everyone and anyone. Let me start with you, uh, uh, Trust, by letting us in on your story, uh, how you went through education and uh, how, you, how you're practicing as a journalist. But first, take us through uh, schooling for you. Uh, so schooling has been, like, schooling was awesome as far as I'm concerned, right? Right from primary to up to, like, sex school, which is secondary school, um, down to a teacher institution, which I did University of Lagos. It was awesome, to be perfectly honest. Um, in the vast majority of instances, I, I never for once had issues with academics. Like, it was brilliant. And I, I must say, like, brilliant in terms of, yeah, because aside primary school that I did the regular, um, like, I did the special school, last Pachelli School for the Blind, yeah. Um, I went to regular schools. <laughs> I'm, I'm one in I'm one who never went to a private school, right? So from private school, I went to a government school, which is Model College. So I went to Federal Government College and in Lagos and went to University of Lagos. All of these are government-owned schools. Mm. And in vast majority of instances, they lack in, vast, they lack in various uh, facilities to be provided to, for people to thrive, right? But <laughs> you have to thrive in any way. Like, you have no choice. You can't tell anyone that, oh, the reason why I failed is because there was no book. The reason why I failed was because I couldn't read. You, you can't tell nobody that. Like, nobody wants to hear that. All they want to hear is your success story. And right from time, I've, I was only determined that, you know what, trust and answer. 
um, what it is is you have to make it no matter what it is like you have to break through and become the best you can be like that's why i'm here and now i'm a journalist and I, yeah i'm doing incredibly well to, to, a, to relatively even if i want to become like my boss <laughs> <Suleiman Alade. laughs> but, but hey we're doing, we're doing pretty nice we're doing pretty good at the moment and um we're, we're, we're thriving we're, we're thriving we're doing well yeah university of lagos I, I would like to zero in on university of lagos just for like 30 seconds right mm. so <laughs> I'm sorry, like University of Lagos, but University of Lagos was actually I'm close to being close to being terrible, even though outright terrible. Like I, I must be perfectly honest, right? You 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 get to meet people who necessarily don't care about what you do, right? They, all they care is oh, come write your exam if you pass, you pass. If you don't pass, you fail. Like nobody cares about you, right? Um, I remember vividly going to meet a lecturer and asking the lecturer, hey, what's up? Um, I'll need your 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 book that you said you write, that you said you wrote, right? Mm. In in Braille. And or in soft copy, and he was telling me, "Hey, I can't give you soft copy. Like you have to find it anyway." Like so, <laughs> I was I was left on my own to make sure that oh, I found that soft copy, and to ensure that I read thanks to great friends that I had, big ups to big guys like top guys, and thanks to sheer determination from by by me and yeah, and I was able to scale through um, credibly. I don't know maybe not credibly well, but good enough yeah to to get a job. <laughs> Well, I'll come back to you, Trust, and I'll also come back to you, uh, uh, Chingiri. Uh, uh, for those watching, uh, uh, the first time I met Trust, I, I said to him, I said, uh, um, you, you're visually impaired. And Trust said, no, I'm blind. <laughs> I can't believe you remember this. I, 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 and I was taken aback. You know, I, I thought I was being careful with how, you know, uh, uh, to choose my words. But again, let's go to you, uh, Dari Dairo. Um, Take, take us through how it was for you. Uh, uh, you didn't attend uh, University of Lagos, did you? Let us in on your education background and how it was like for you schooling. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Salai. I attended uh, the uh, Obafemi Aola University, I proudly say, Great Ife. And um, it's been a major influence. And if you know Ife very well, Ife was built into the, a very interesting terrain. It was built into the terrain and you have a lot of ups and downs. And um, but the interesting thing about the terrain of the building and uh, the building architecture is the fact that as far back as it was built, there was some talks mm. to people with disability. There are some areas you could find ramp access, but not widely extensive. And it was challenging. And, you know, Ife was a place you had to climb a lot, you know, staircases, even the terrain was, you know, hilly and all of that. And what that taught me was that sometimes society could, would be um, nice, by way of being accommodative, sometimes you're just and uh, you're, you're just left to find your own, to find your way, and that's the way it is being for persons with disability. One of the beauty of my stay uh, experience in Ife was that I stay at a particular block that was specifically built for people with disability. From access, there was there's a there's a huge ramp from the car park that goes into the first floor. You won't even know that you are you are going into the first floor. It feels like you're on the ground floor. Hmm. The, the rooms and the convenience, the toilets were designed for people with disability. But unfortunately, a few years back, I went back to the, same, to the school and I realized that the school has, you know, scrapped the, has allocated the room to, other people, uh, not minding people with disability. And of course, I know it's not because that people with disability are not enrolled in the schools. It's just because the school management doesn't understand why those that building was, that floor was particularly specially designed. And that shows the uh, lot of ignorance mm. people have about issue with disability. You would expect that people at that level people who are well traveled would have seen these things, these provisions in other climbs being made for people with disability, but then they had to come here and believe 
people with disability here don't des uh, deserve that. Growing up, my earlier education was uh, just about the same thing because, uh, like uh, uh, my, uh, I mean, uh, the the other the journalist uh, guest in the studio, I never went to special school for people with disability. I went to same school, and that went a long way in helping me develop a comp let me use the word competitive spirit uh, acceptance of myself in light of my otherness with other children so it prepares me for the reality of uh, of exclusion and victimization mm. and you know like children children are very innocent they don't have to mind their language like you they will say it as it is you know so in all of that, we'll fight, we'll learn. By the end of the day, we became friends, ultimately. You know, because that's always a very universal language with children. They'll fight, they'll learn. But as quickly as they fight, they become friends again. And that helps me forging uh, relationships, social communication skills. That, I, uh, that helps me to, you know, relate better, you know, because there's no safe zone, safe zone or uh, safety zone of being among my like. And that's one of the reasons why the world today is talking about inclusive education. You know, it is very, very important. And it goes a long way. I remember that one of the things I've noticed is when you see people in administration who have compassion for disability, you look very well. It's either some of them have children with disability, they've had siblings with or friends with disability growing up. You know, or they know some that they've been close with and has taught them to accept uh, people with disability as just like any other person. All right. OK, uh, really let me let me let me go to uh, uh, let me go to, uh, uh, you know, someone else. But 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 again, quickly, because for those who, who don't who don't know uh, quickly here, uh, Dari, uh, you are a, a polio survivor, right? Yes, I am. OK, good. Yeah. Uh, uh, Constance, uh, good to see you. And uh, I know a lot of people will be wondering, why do I have Constance here with me today? Uh, Constance, let us in on, on this conversation. Uh, you, uh, albinism, is it, uh, does it also fall into what we're discussing today? Um, good evening. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Um, yes, I would categorically say that albinism falls under um, disability. And I would buttress my point by explaining what um, disability really means, because people do have different definitions of what it means. So they think it's kind of like a derogatory term, but mm. disability is impairment. Now, what are impairments? I can't see far. I have low vision. I have insufficient melanin for um, protection of my skin. Mm. So I am limited to the time I have to go out and time I have to be in the house. So impairment. Then we have activity restriction. And the third one is participation limitation. Now, disability happens when these three factors interact with each other. The fact that you have impairment now doesn't mean you have a disability. Let me explain. Now, for example, I can't see far, but when I have to cross the road, now my impairment is coming in contact with a barrier. That is activity limitation. I have to cross the road and I can't do that. And then I need an aid. It means my impairment has Coming, has interacted with a barrier where I have to, I have um, the need for someone to assist me to cross to the other side of the road, and that is a disability. Another example is growing up in school because of my skin. Um, normally, break time is by like 12 p.m. and everybody has to go up kids. I have to stay in class. That is activity limitation too, because when my mates are out there having fun by 12 uh, p.m., I can't go out and have fun like them. 
because I have insufficient melanin. So that mm. is activity limitation. I cannot participate on an equal level with others. Or when I'm in class and I have to look at the board from sitting at the back. Now, most educators think, oh, a person with albinism, when you put that person in front, the person is fine. That's not it. You have to understand and ask, how far can you see the board? So if I am placed somewhere that is not convenient for me to see the board, now my low vision comes in contact with a barrier. I can't see the board. That is participation restriction because I cannot participate on an equal level with others. So when my impairment comes, interacts with the, with the barriers in the society, attitudinal, communication, um, structural barriers, that is when a disability is said to, to be present. So yes, albinism falls under disability because apart from the low vision, we also have skin issues. And you know that from early hours of the morning, we can move around until it's 10 a.m. We can't go out because of the um, ultraviolet rays from the sun, which makes us, it affects us and we get skin cancer easily than someone who has melanin, than someone who is um, melanated. So we have to avoid the sun from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. And so you see that our activities are limited. So we have to work within a particular time, time shift, and that is limiting. And you hear people say, oh, people have um, single disability. I would say that persons with albinism have multiple disability because we have low vision and then we have skin issues. Hmm. So yeah, persons with albinism qualify to be called persons with disabilities. Thank you. Well, like Constance, that, 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 that's uh, something uh, for us, uh, uh, I think something we just learned here. And uh, very quickly, we'll come back to you and so that we can now see how we can actually start, uh, well, dealing with some of these issues uh, with uh, uh, an inclusive, you know, uh, uh, philosophy. Uh, with me here is uh, Chinjiri, and Chinjiri, you're your friend of trust, and uh, uh, that means you, you qualify to be uh, um, as person uh, who has a friend. H how is it like living with someone, uh, you know, with disabilities, you know, for instance, like trust? Well, um, to my own vast knowledge, I believe that every person, regardless of um, regardless of the position as to which you find yourself in, that's um, being able or disabled, is considered a human being first. Mm. So irrespective of the fact that um, I cannot see, irrespective of the fact that I cannot work, does not make you less of a human. Mm. So this person, I have already identified to have a very good oral and have a vast knowledge of understanding than, if I'm not mistaken, most of the able people. <laughs> <laughs> so anyways, um, being friends with him has never really, I've never really had any, any, um, I never really had any reason to doubt his person. You, 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 don't, you don't think trust sees and he's just... Yeah, the, <laughs> the first time I ever met him, I thought that this guy, maybe he's pretending. <laughs> You know, maybe he's just trying to see who is what's being friends but with. I thought, I thought this conversation something. would end in my room. <laughs> <laughs> because, 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 no, trust, we'll come back to you. Because, because I, I, uh, messages are sent to his phone. He replies. He calls me up. And, uh, and he reads my chat. So he, he also goes on to read so many of the messages leading up to this uh, uh, program. So uh, I, I'll come back to you, Chingere. Uh, uh, so trust... Now let's start talking about our duties. Uh, yeah. And uh, Constance has started off by letting us know some of the limitations, right. uh, especially for uh, people, uh, for albinos. Right. Uh, as a journalist, right. are there any constraints? Uh, you know, even before you get, got into you know, the field in practice, uh, how, was it difficult getting employed? Okay, uh, to be perfectly honest, yeah, um, it wasn't difficult getting employed. Um, why? Because, right, coming up as from uni, right from secondary school, I trusted my abilities. I'm like, you know what, yo, 
if there'll be one person to be picked to become a broadcaster tomorrow, it'll be Trush on on set, no doubt about it. So like, I, I had that, that convention that, hey, 100%, that once it comes to journalism, it comes to broadcasting, it comes to even writing, there is nothing, like nothing is going to stop Trush and Nonset from getting to that point. So it was, it was, con it, I, was I was really convinced about it. However, um, I won't lie that there exists that barrier of trying to convince people that, hey, I'm good enough to get this job done. Mm. So it's a function of, yeah, I remember when I got the job, um, some people were like, oh, how will you do that? How will you do this? And I just told them simply, um, one of my interview questions was, <laughs> one of my interview questions was, um, trust, Shannon, um, trust um, why do you think we should consider you for this job? I, under I understood where he was coming from. Guess what I said? I said the first thing, first and most important thing you should take from this interview is that my name is Trust Shannon Nonsa. That's more important than anything you hear, right? So for that thing, I told him that nobody you interview here today will give you 100%. So if you think because of the 5 or 10% I won't give you, you employ me, then it's for the company to decide, right? So I was definite that when it comes to doing the job, I will get it done. When I got the job, it was, okay, uh, we don't know. Let's take it little by little. And right now, I'm the community manager of the station, right? And, and I got in, in less than like three, four months, right? Mm. right, right that's, 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 that I'm on, right? So that is because, one, trust your abilities. Two, I was ready to grow, right? Grow as a human. I read a lot of books. I, I try to do courses. I try to learn and relearn and all of this stuff. I learn from senior colleagues, learn from junior colleagues, learn from interns. Do you understand? So try to learn and good rapport. I, I, I keep on telling people this. Like so for someone who is like disabled, for, for instance, like you can't afford not to have like good rapport with people. You you can't just afford to do that. For example, like Pearl being a like a great person, like being my, my friend, like my G. Um <laughs> yeah, I I keep on I, I, like the, the reason why we're friends today is because you know what? We can relate on the same level in whatever she wants to talk about and whatever anyone wants to talk about, I can talk about it, be it politics, sports, whatever. So you have to be on that level with anybody, do you understand? For them to even consider you worthy to become to be part of their circle. Because friends, they don't even consider you to be pressed to, to be to be to be worthy of being in their circle. So you have to show them that hey, <laughs> I'm good enough to be here. Then they'll be like, oh, you're not supposed to be here, but you tell them, but I'm here, so what next? So that's, that's, that's what it is. Like, that's how, that's how, that's the spirit you need to go with for someone with disability. Yeah, you have to have a little bit of cockiness, yeah. Well, anyway, <laughs> real quickly here, before I go to Dari uh, Dairo, where do you work? Uh, Lego Stocks 91.3 FM, uh, Mega Electrics, yeah. Okay, great. And uh, we we'll come to you, uh, and that's uh, Dari Dairo. Uh, oh, looks like uh, Dari uh, is, is gone off and... Uh, let me, let me quickly go back to uh, Constance. Uh, Constance, you know, there are a lot of issues you raised, uh, issues that, has, you know, uh, that have to do with you know, work conditions, timing, and uh, how people also see uh, you know, albinos and some other persons uh, with disabilities. Let, on in, uh, let us in on some of the things uh, you, you, that people should understand, especially as the world celebrate people with disabilities. What are the things uh, the rest of the world don't understand? Uh, you know, listening to you for the first time, some just realize that they may be living with some form of disability or the other without knowing. Constance. Thank you very much. Uh, before I answer the question, I would like to correct something. We are persons with albinism, not... No, no, with, with, with albinism, yes. Be, be, because uh, in, in trying to explain it a while ago, you were talking about some of the constraints, you know, that persons mm -hmm. with albinism go through. For instance, uh, impaired vision uh, and some other key things. Sure. Um, I think people need to realize that we are humans first before our disability. We are persons before the disability. So they shouldn't define us because of our kind of disability. Some, some disabilities are obvious, some are not. It, it doesn't mean that we can't do what others are doing though at some point we might have limitations and that is why we we are advocating for inclusion and in other sec in other spheres we always say okay reasonable accommodation for us we can perform 
optimally we can be more productive so i think people need to change their mindset they should uh, begin to unlearn certain things mm. they should stop thinking that oh persons with disabilities have the disability because they committed an offense or their parents committed a sin somewhere mm. or they are being punished by the god you know like when it comes to albinism people say when you have sex in the afternoon you give that to a child with albinism <laughs> or if you see a person with albinism this person is a money making machine kill this person use the parts and you get money so people even say when you have um hiv and you have sex with a person with albinism you get cured so people need to unlearn these things because they are not true <laughs> they need to begin to think deep and realize that we are human beings we are not some special gods like the yoruba say we are um, osha we are not osha we are human beings like you don't worship us because when you begin to worship us it means we can actually perform miracles like you think so we are humans every person with disability matters in the society irrespective of how they look how their disability might appear or how you think you need to interact with them they are humans first and that is why every 3rd december we celebrate international day for persons with disabilities to showcase the strength of persons with disabilities the persons with disabilities who have gone far you know who have carved a niche for themselves and we're trying to yes this persons are persons with disabilities and they can do this and it means every person with disability is valuable hmm. every human being is valuable and productive and all they need is an enabling in environment an inclusive environment that caters to the needs of every person with disability all right okay constance Thank let me quickly bring in uh, dari here I, I can see dari dari is back uh, uh, good to have you back again uh, you know, there are a lot of, uh, a lot of issues, uh, you know, especially uh, with persons with disabilities. Uh, as the man in charge in Lagos State, uh, Southwest Nigeria, uh, of Lasoda, I think Lasoda is uh, uh, Lagos State Office of uh, Disability Affairs. Uh, how have you been able to ensure that appropriate policies are in place for better survival of persons with disabilities? Thank you very much. Um, one of our primary assignments for the Lagos State Office for Disability Affairs is to create uh, more awareness about the law. And um, this, what we're doing, we've done several publications of the law, simplified versions of the law, and which we made, we've made available to a wide range of uh, sectors of the society. We've had uh, several engagements with uh, the justice sector, that's the police, and uh, the police, the, uh, the judiciary, uh, the judges, and, and uh, a lot of law enforcement agencies. And also uh, this year, regularly we do uh, training in sign language training for uh, different sectors of the society. This year, through a synergy with the uh, Nigerian Institute of Bankers, we did sign language training for bankers from across different uh, banking institutions in Nigeria. This we did at CIBN building at, on the island. And uh, the turnout was very impressive and we made it competitive. And a particular bank consistently won all the categories, you know. We plan to make it a, uh, a, 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 a statement uh, sometime soon when we're gonna unveil and celebrate that particular bank who's uh, not only sending their staff, but they did well. And it shows that that bank, particular bank has been doing something in the area of people with disability and the, uh, before, before then, you know. So, and also we, we're doing a, a strategic engagement. For example, there's the provision of the law that at least 5% uh, of the work, of workforce 
of every organization must be reserved for qualified people with disability. So how do we get this enforced? Well, one way we're going about it is to institute a, the Work Access Initiative, which is going to be the first in Africa, which is a, 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 an initiative to encourage private sector to employ more persons with disability and through a combination of tax incentives and um, uh, funding for the extra cost of employing persons, people with disability in an environment. Because sometimes to employ a person with disability, you might need to remodel the building or your environment. You might need to provide special assistive technologies. With that initiative, uh, that cost will be taken off you as a corporate organization so that a more corporate organization will be encouraged to employ more people with disabilities. So these are some of the things we are doing. Some we're already doing, some we have in the works, just very soon we'll roll them out. In the next couple of days, we're gonna be having uh, a disabled sports festival. Uh, Ability Games, we call it, is the first of its kind in Nigeria. It, we're celebrating people. The, you know, I'm sure you know that uh, uh, consistently why the uh, other Olympic, uh, regular Olympic, uh, hardly come with you know medals. People with disability had consistently been coming with bag full of medals, gold, silver, bronze, what have you. So that's why, and the governor, uh, Olushala Sonwolu, did promise during his campaign that he was going to make sports an empowerment uh, avenue for persons with disability. This is a promise kept with these ability games to uh, empower more people with disability through sports. And okay, have... Daria, I'll come back to you. When I do come back, I'll like, I'll like for you to take us through growing up as a polio survivor, uh, if there are some lessons learned, and uh, so that uh, uh, we see if your office is latching on to some of those key things you learned growing up uh, to help in some of these uh, younger ones uh, who have been, you know, talked out of society. And now, coming back to you, uh, Trust, I, I, I stumbled on a video where your, your parents, your, your dad specifically, said when this happened to you. Yes, I saw, I, saw, I, saw, I, saw, I saw that clip, that when you lost your sight, people came to them and they said, hey, take him to the village. Yeah. Uh, I can imagine what would, Trust would have become now if you, if you never went to school. Uh, so there are others growing up now, right. okay, who are younger persons. Right. Uh, you should be able to say something to such parents. Uh, let them in on what exactly is happen happening. How was it like uh, for you and your parents and your siblings and even friends like uh, Chinyere? Uh, okay. Much questions back to one. So first things first, like... Because you're a journalist, <laughs> so I, I know. I, I, and, you're, and I trust that trust will give answers that definitely will help someone on the continent. You know what it is. <laughs> well, first things first, right? Like, my relationship with my folks, my parents, like, and my siblings were awesome. Like, I, I don't think that I could have, like, better relationship with them. Do you understand? And especially my dad, like, I, I tell people to date. My dad is still angry I didn't come out with, from university with the first class. Mm -hmm. Because he felt, now see, if trust put his mind to make a first class, he'll make a first class. Forget all this nonsense that people talk about. Do you understand? Like, <laughs> he, he keeps on saying it. Like, Oh, the reason why trust came out with it too much is because he wasn't serious. Yes, I wasn't serious. I won't lie. Do you understand? <laughs> so it was awesome. My dad being the one giving me that confidence to say, you know what, trust, you can do it. And my mom, <laughs> if it's up to my mom, like I won't even be washing, I won't do anything. My mom was ready to do anything for me. I was only like, my mom, hey, mama, calm down. Like I'm good. Do you understand? My, my siblings have been awesome. And of course, my friends. Like <laughs> my friends have been like the best thing that ever happened to me. I tell, I tell people with disability, the best thing you have in life is your support cast. You understand like hmm. if you have like the awesome say that again the best thing you have in life is your support cast ensure you're smart enough to pick up your to pick your support cast good enough hmm. i tell you what yeah uh from my time in secondary school right and i always had the, i always had awesome support cast like my friends i got to university had the amazing amazing friends like male friends amazing and then we kept on right these guys are guys that <laughs> hey, wait, wait a minute, you said male friends. Yeah, male friends. No female friends. 
Uh, I didn't have. I do have much female friends. To be honest, okay. I think I'll say this here. I think. I think. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. No, you couldn't see them. You. you yeah, I can't see. Obviously. Yeah, no. <laughs> Trust, don't, don't let me down. Okay, okay, let me let, let me let, let me let you know something here. Yeah? Let me let you know something here. Yeah? I hardly have female friends, and I don't know, but Chiris seems to be like one of the very few female friends I have. Yeah, that, and, that, that's Junior by you there. Yeah, she's here. She's yes. always with me, like yeah, my G for life. <laughs> so, so do you understand? Like, I, I I barely have female friends. I think like female friends I have and everything they're just like six, like five, four, three, two, one, or thereabouts. Do you understand? Mm. So, I I I love I, I, your support cast should be that person. Not necessarily, see, and this is what I tell people, yeah? You can't always re 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 rely on people at every point in the way. Mm -hmm. You must ensure that you also come through for them as well when, you need, when they need you, we understand? So don't always bug them. Most people with disability fail to realize that these guys who also want to be with you, they're also humans, they get tired. So don't, oh, you want to do anything. Hey, can you help me do that? Nah, do it yourself. Like, do it yourself. Don't stress nobody's daughter or nobody's son. You understand? But you have a sister, a younger sister that stresses you out when you're relaxing. Oh, uh, no, my younger sister, that one is... That one. <laughs> Forget my younger sister, that one. <laughs> so, you understand? So, at the end of the day, I just, I just keep on telling people, right? Continue, let people who with disability, whatever disability they have, let them fly. Don't pamper them. If you can't do things for them, tell them, hey, hey, I can't do this for you. Do it yourself. So, quickly here, were you born blind? No, I wasn't. I lost my sight at the age of four. Um, yeah, that was when the whole, like, mom crying. Me, at the age of four, I remember vivid, like, okay, no, I didn't remember vividly, but I can make some, some clips, and, of course, my mom told me. I walk, I walk to my mom, I tell my mom, hey, mama, you don't need to cry. I'll become the best thing you ever imagined, right? And <laughs> right now, she's proud, right, of crushing an answer. So it's, it's what it is. Like, you need to ensure to let them know, let people with disability know that life is not rosy. I can't be here for you all the time. Do you understand? <laughs> there are times I'll call my friends, hey, bro, what's up? Can you run this for me? I tell you, Benny, trust, I don't have time. Do you understand? And I don't take it to heart because they also have things they, they, they want to do for themselves. Do you understand? Even Pearl, yeah, right? Chiri. I tell them, hey, Chiri, what's up, Pearl? Uh, so, 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 Chiri say, I need to go out, so I need to do something. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, feel good. <laughs> do you understand? So that, that is what it is. Like, have this open relationship with them. Open relationship. Even if, as a lady or as a guy, maybe they're asking you out or anything, if you can't be with them, maybe because oh they're not they're vision impaired, they're they are crippled, whatever, tell them, hey, I don't think I can be with you because of this. Mm. Like they will appreciate that than giving them the whole, uh, I'm not ready, uh, I'm not like, nah. Like be honest with people with disability. Be Let, honest. Yeah, be honest. Be open. Have that open comment. I tell my friends every time, <laughs> you need to see where me and my friends banter. Today, when we're coming, when we're coming to work, she really, she really called me blind Batimus. <laughs> She literally looked like Asuka, she's here. She literally couldn't blind my teammates. Like, we play around these things. And it's simple, right? Like, I, life is not, the way you play with your regular friends, the way you play with people, play with, like, be free and talk what you want to say. Like, and that's why, that's why I say, um, uh, well, to our viewers, that's why I say uh, he's not blind. Um, <laughs> I, I do radio. If, you, if you've ever been to the radio studio, you see we have uh, hundreds of Burtons. Uh, on the console, right? Yeah. And this man operates them. This guy is not blind. Are you sure I operate them? Uh, well, anyway. <laughs> Maybe uh, you help me. <laughs> <laughs> I've never helped you. So, Pearl, quickly, um, do you also have friends who know you are friends to someone like Trust who think that you're weird? Oh, oh um, when it comes to people's opinion, right, I really do not, um, it's not like it doesn't matter. Mm. But I try to weigh my options. And for you to try and disregard somebody else because of his impairment doesn't make you a better person. Mm. So, yes, I have friends that I know that I have friends that are, you get. Uh, has impaled. anyone ever, you know, pulled you aside and say, Yes, um, what are you doing with him? Yes, I've actually had someone that be like, ah, Are you not, how do you walk? Like, how mm. do you walk with him outside? And I'm like, the same way I walk with you outside. <laughs> it's just the only difference is I have to guide him. Mm. But at the same time, it doesn't still change the person he is. It doesn't still change the fact that he's a human being. And it doesn't still change the fact that he is my friend. So I'm your friend. If you cannot be with him as a friend, then it's fine. But you don't advise me not to be with him because of the stigma something mm. 
of having to see someone beside me with him. Was I think that's the word I was waiting for. And now that <laughs> takes me quickly to Constance. Constance, you actually did not use that word, but everything you said hovered around stigmatization. And now we're looking at inclusion now. Help us here so that uh, we can actually start to disabuse minds just the way you started off by letting people know that, look, uh, albinism doesn't mean that, uh, well, you can kill us. Uh, it doesn't mean that, uh, well, this was uh, as a result of uh, uh, copulation by, uh, in, in daytime by our parents. You know, you've said so many things and we, can, uh, we laughed and we chuckled over them, but these are things we hear on a daily basis. Okay. So tell us more on, uh, let's speak more uh, about stigmatization and how we can actually deconstruct that. Constance. Um, thank you very much. Um, realistically, like stigmatization is something that is still very prevalent in in Nigeria mm. because it's been fueled by culture and tradition and also religious beliefs. You know, um, and also the media. When it comes to movies, you know, when you see movies and someone did something wrong in the in the in the, in the village, and then the gods strike. It's either the gods strike the person to be uh, someone who becomes a wheelchair user, or someone who is blind, or someone who is deaf, or even someone who has leprosy. Now these um, media's also um, they they also um, foster the stigma in the movies we watch our cultures to do that but i think it's time people begin to people begin to read um you know like they say if you want to hide any hide information from a black man hide it in book i think it's time people begin to read people begin to question those things they've heard or those things they've been brought up to believe you know and I think it's time we also begin to do research. Okay, how, how, how do these people get this thing? Some are genetic, some are by accident. How do we um, um, stop this thing? And I think it's time people also begin to become involved in making sure that stigma is eradicated. For example, if I advocate to you and tell you, oh, albinism is this, albinism is that, you don't keep the information to yourself. You tell the next person, and the next person tells the next person. You see, the awareness is being created. The stigma is being reduced. But when we hoard information to ourselves without letting people know, without letting people understand these things, the level of stigmatization still remains where it is. People need to be educated on the causes of disabilities. What causes these things? And let them also be aware that it can happen to anybody. You might be walking on the road and you get hit by a car. You see yourself on a wheelchair or you even have your place of work. So we need to engage people. We need to make them aware that disability is not, uh, it's not a curse uh, the way they portray it in the movies. Disability is not something that is contagious, but disability is something that can happen to anybody. It's either genetic, it's, it can come by accident, it can come by even drugs you take, injections you take. So when people understand the concept behind disability and things that causes disability, the stigma begins to reduce because now they are more conscious. They are conscious that, oh, it can happen to me. So I have to be nice to everybody because I don't know where um, I will see myself. And also, um, stigma can be reduced. Certainly. Uh, 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 traditional sorry. leaders. And yeah, yeah I think, I, I think you, 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 you're spot on when you talk about uh, movies and our culture and how we've been able to you know, give, give Philip to some of these uh, wrong you know, notions and perception and even uh, traditional beliefs. Uh, and uh, uh, I thought um, Tross is just going to add to that uh, so that we can go to diary. Yeah, yeah, so quickly, uh, just a few, a few seconds. So yeah. if, you, if, if you watch this movie called Don't Breathe, because I try to watch movies as well. Don't so, Breathe. Yeah, Don't Breathe, right? It's a, it's a Hollywood movie. 
So he portrayed a blind person being powerful to do stuff on his own. But when you look at, at our Nollywood movies, it portrays disability as someone who is weak, who can do nothing. So in vast majority of instances, what you get is where people then see that blindness, that someone on wheelchair, as being incapacitated and not able to do nothing. In fact, in vast majority of instances, it portrays them as being non-educated. Mm. And that is why I, I, I have this dream, or maybe not a dream, but yeah, a dream, to have a movie, like a Nollywood movie, where I sit down with the producer and what's, we write the script together. And let, because see, my people who know me, they see some movies and they see blind people in the movie. And they'll be like, are you guys all right? This is not trust. Trust is blind as well. Mm. Do you get it? But not everybody knows trust. Do you understand? Like, not everyone knows other blind people who seem to be independent. Do you understand? So they see that movie, and they see me in the road, and they want to give me 15 naira. Do you get oh, me? It has happened to you before. Uh, I can't. There's, there, there, was a time, there was a time I was on my suit, like, three-piece suits, no jokes. Like, <laughs> and I was look, feel, looking all fly. And get, the, the woman just came with 15 naira, and I'm like, bro, can you make this money, like, 500,000, and we'll consider? <laughs> Like, do you understand? Like, that was what I, that was, that was what I can treat over. I was like, can you make this 500,000 and we consider? Do you understand? So, like, it's, it's crazy. So, so when that time comes, sorry, I don't mean to shock you. Yeah, no, uh, because we, we, we're almost out of time so that we can allow uh, uh, Dari closest for us. Uh, when that time comes about the movie, uh, yeah. count on, you know, New Central to be a, a partner with you on that. But again, I was almost going to ask, yeah. did you just say you watched the movie? Yeah, I, yeah, I did. <laughs> I told you. My best series is actually Peaky Blinders. I watch Peaky Blinders and I'm like, yeah. I told you guys, well, I'm dealing with someone I'm yet to understand. Uh, uh, Dari Dairo, uh, you, you, uh, you have to close this for us quickly here. Uh, let us in because we're listening to every one of you, especially uh, Constance. I think we'll, we'll go home with, you know, more enlightened, you know, continent. Uh, if, you know, Africans should... Uh, do away with some of these, uh, you know, wrong notions. Uh, let us in on how everyone can, uh, you know, be on the same page to understand that first we're humans and it just might be me or you or the man who's like trust without <laughs> his sight, with your chest. without his sight, <laughs> watches movies. I still can't believe it. <laughs> Dari. You know that the most important thing that you need to enjoy a movie is more the sound than the visuals. Especially if you're watching... Uh, a, a minute here. I don't know if you have if you have a sound close to you, uh, Dari. Uh, that, that's a hallback. If you can push that, uh, I think, or mute... If there's another sound, okay. it can be muted so that we can hear you clearly. Yes. Uh, can you hear me now? Oh, perfect. Okay. So what I'm saying is um, um, sometimes, you know, when you, what you, uh, have, what your disability takes away from you is compensated somewhere else. Mm -hmm. You know, I, like, um, I've seen this as a uh, season uh, movie, C, S double E. Mm -hmm. And you'll see it's a, it's a world where people, everybody, or like most people are blind. Mm. And yet you have warriors among them. You have them doing everything normal, you know. So you want to think, how can warriors, blind, they are all blind, you know. But they have very keen sense of smell and sight, which, the, which augments for the... Uh, the sights that they lose. So, meaning that as a person with disability, you might be blind, but that does not take you, take opportunities away from you. You still can enjoy other things, you know, like, you know, um, like movie, going to the movies, you know. Now, having said that, and just like um, uh, Trust said, you're as strong as your support network, as I call it, mm. as a person with disability. And I've been lucky. I had people who challenged me and uh, that uh, helped me in a lot. So that's just speak to that society. Let's see, and like Hostan said too, let's see persons with disability as persons first. 
and then they not define them by their disability. It's good to have sympathy. No, no, it's good to have uh, to want to help, but sympathy is not the word. It's empathy. So you want to have something like uh, trust said. I mean, five naira. 50 naira. I, I, I wondered not... how how he knew it was five naira. <laughs> <laughs> you speak uh, I, I wondered how he knew that he was given five naira. No comment. <laughs> no, you see, <laughs> yeah. I, 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 I know this conversation, we'll take this conversation beyond yeah. here. Uh, his search uh, has been heightened, <laughs> you know. So, and, you know, and he, he, like him, I've had that experience so many times. And I, like I said, Look, if that were to be uh, the key to a good Benz, I would be no, no, I beggar. I would turn beggar for you. <laughs> if it's like $500, I would turn beggar for you. You know, but a party, no, 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 no. But what I have come to, I've come to a situation where mm. I no longer get angry about these things. Because right. when you get angry, you miss an opportunity to impact Make somebody. Yeah. Mm. Because what most cases, uh, uh, motivates that gesture is love and uh, compassion. I think it's so, a fine place for us to leave it uh, today. Love and compassion, understanding, uh, inclusion, inclusive spirit. And of course, uh, uh, it will also afford the continent the opportunity to start building structures that will give easy access to people with disabilities, the banks, the markets, the offices, and a lot of places. Uh, well, will Africa listening to us on the square and every household reminded of the need to cater for persons with disabilities? It's high time we got more inclusive and not face out a whole community of smart, special, great people like Trust and I. Many thanks for being such a nice company, Dari Dairo, and of course Trust, uh, Sean Inose, Constance Onyemechi, and uh, Chinyere Pearl Ezeri. Many thanks to everyone watching, and I'm hoping we'll do it again very soon. I'm Suleiman. Bye-bye.